G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in the south of the map, playing as the Rus, is Dinky King, or as I like to call Donkey Kong. Uh, but uh, we'll go with Dinky King for now. Uh, so he's going to be playing on the color blue. Now the map that we're playing on today is Confluence. And you can see in that mini map that uh, towards the north is our player two, who is Seether. And he is playing the Delhi Sultanate. So the Delhi Sultanate is a civilization that has continued to rise up the, in play rate after Genesis. A lot of players bringing out Genesis in the in, uh, or rather bringing out Delhi in the main event. And it is no surprise to see more and more of them coming out. Uh, so one of the things to note is that Delhi are quite strong on hybrid maps. Their fishing boats in particular, very, very effective at dealing with early aggression. One of the few counters to the Mongols on water maps. Ma majority of people do consider the Mongols to be almost overpowered on water, but the uh, the Delhi are definitely a civilization that puts a spanner in the works for the Mongols. So we'll start off by watching Seether's build, going with six villagers over onto wood at this stage. No mosque getting dropped down and using his starting wood to drop a dock down. Going to be able to get a fishing boat very soon with that one out. His opponent on the other side of the map, Dinky King, looking like he's going to be sticking to a little bit of a land battle, but oh my lord, look at all the wolves in here right now. He's got three wolves that are chasing him. He's about to pick up a fourth one as well. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this is probably a lot of wolves. Like, that that's, that's, a, that's a lot of wolves. Like, I'll just put it out there. That is a lot of wolves. Uh, that's 100 gold for him. He's going to be bringing them in, luring them towards his town center. Some players just prefer to do the micro... Uh, do the, the animation cancel, but it takes a lot of effort when the town center just uh, is going to pick up the gold for you anyway. So you see the 25 gold right there. Spot the 25 gold again any second. There it comes. There's the next one. 25 gold for the next one going to be coming in. There it is. So then picking up the 100 gold from that final wolf. So very happy with this opening he will be. Now, one of the other things that the Rus get to do is they get to place down hunting cabins. And this map has got no shortage of stealth forest. So you can see down here towards the south of the map, there's plenty of stealth forest. So we can expect that we'll be seeing at least a little bit of hunting cabin madness down towards here. Now, keep in mind with the hunting cabins, a lot of people don't realize that you can actually mine or chop the uh, wood from your hunting cabin. So you can see that this circle here is going to give Dinky King 20 gold a minute, okay? And he is actively chopping the wood that's there. But the truth is that you are not disincentivized from chopping this wood because it doesn't matter what the wood is uh, at any point in time other than when you construct that hunting cabin. So once that hunting cabin gets constructed, then you are that is the set rate that it will remain at. Obviously, if you were to delete it and then rebuild the same hunting cabin, you would get a lower rate because there would be trees that have been chopped since you've built it. So that is a little bit of information for you guys. Delhi fishing ships can shoot and gather at the same time. Am I seeing that right? That's kind of wild if, if they can. I didn't realize that. Uh, that is pretty cool. Uh, so he scouted out the Delhi fishing boats. Now, keep in mind, he is playing as the Rus, so he's going to be able to choose, you know, whether he wants to deal with that on land, on water, or whether he doesn't even want to deal with it at all. But keep in mind, you ideally do want to potentially, not potentially, but you do want to contest your enemy's water. You don't want to let them have only water because if they do have the, the water and you don't, they're going to be able to get out things like the Zebek. Uh, they're going to be able to get out things like the Explosive Dow, which is going to control a lot of these alleyways. And they do really act as alleyways or corridors throughout the map and give the player a lot of uh, advantage, just both with regard to their economy as well as with regard to their versatility. As an example, you could potentially drop. So you could make yourself a little bit of a transport ship, bring it over here, bring some units in, and then just drop them over on this side. And if you've walled up one of these crossings or this one over here, then you're going to be expecting no units. And then all of a sudden, you've got units in your base, and you're like, well, hold on a minute, you didn't get through my walls. And that's because they crossed over on the crossing. So, going to be going up here with the Golden Gate. Four villagers gathering that one up at the moment. A fifth villager going to be heading out to drop down a mining camp. Got himself a little bit uh, housed at the moment. This is not looking good for him right now. It's going to take a while before this house actually gets dropped down. There's, there's the first one. So, I'm going to be able to get that one up. And sitting up on 377 gold at the moment. A huge amount of gold. Now, one thing to note is he is actually going out to the gold mine. So I'm expecting we're probably going to be seeing a, a fast castle here because the Rus, typically, they don't make a lot or they don't use a lot of gold. Obviously, they've got access to the early night, uh, which is definitely something unique for both them and for the French. But in, on a map like this, it's something that I would expect we're not going to see a lot of. So I'm, I'm hoping that we're probably going to be seeing a little bit of Springles in this game, at least for the Rus player. Uh, Rus have got the best Springles in the game. The Springles at the moment, a little bit too strong. Uh, probably need to be toned down just a tad. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if we do see that. But take a look at this road that we've got. This is the road to nowhere, but the road to all happy places. As the uh, the gold mine's connected to the dock, and then the dock is connected to the gold mine, and then it, it's it's a beautiful, it's a circle of life. It is really the circle of life right now. All right, so now we've got another expansion coming up towards the north, and so we have got Dinky King looking to expand out with some Lodja attack ships. Now keep in mind, these attack ships can be converted at any time. If he doesn't want attack ships, he wants fishing boats, he can do that. If he wants uh, explosive dows, he can do that. Uh, so they do, they cost a small amount of uh, wood to change over and, and other resources, gold as well, uh, but uh, not a huge amount. So really, really cool. And you can do that while you're moving as well. Uh, so he's gonna continue to head out now with an attack. Now, interestingly, all of them do have different uh, train time. So the villager or the fishing boat for uh, the lodger fishing boat uh, actually has a shorter train time than the attack ship. So it, it costs uh, a relatively similar amount to uh, to build it and then change it over. So that's one of the things that you can actually look to do. All right. So now Cedar going to continue uh, getting pressured here as he looks to push out past his opponent. But uh, got to managed to uh, save a couple of fishing boats for himself. So, feeling pretty decent. Gonna have a Dow coming out. At least I expect we're having a Dow coming out. Indeed, we do have a Dow coming out now for him. At the same time, a bit of scouting going back here. Uh, we've got the first town center up. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything else other than the Dome of Faith. It's gonna be out providing a little bit of, uh, of coverage. But now we've got more attack ships coming in. I think we saw a third one coming in there as well. So that Dow is out. He's going to be looking to trade and do a, do a pretty effective job, honestly. He's sitting underneath this dock. He's going to be very happy. Uh, he's just going to be careful with the fishing boats. He needs to pull those fishing boats back. You can see the Dow trying its best to get up there to the front. Not having a lot of luck as now that scout begins to slowly siege away at the dock upon the shoreline of the Rus player. We'll take a look over at the Rus player's base and see exactly what he's got going on, what his plans are at the moment. Going to be dropping down that stable couple villages out on this gold mine. Do we have that research coming in just yet? Indeed we do. Professional Scouts is in, but the question is where are those Scouts? And they're up to the north stealing the hunts away from their opponent and it looks like he's actually... Has he hidden away some of these hunts? He has indeed! Look at this cheeky cat. He is hiding hunts in the forest. So he only had three up there, but uh, he's actually managed to take these three away. And that's not an explosive Dow. That is just a Dow on fire. Uh, it, it can sometimes be a little bit uh, curious as to what is happening. But uh, yes, I assure you that's not an explosive Dow. It is, uh, it's too early for them to get out. But it actually looks like the Rus player is going to be pretty decently uh, strong against his opponent here. Dinky King definitely having a good time rather than a bad time. And uh, we see him starting to melt through. Uh, and the primary concern he's going to have is reinforcements coming in from here. Keep in mind there's going to be no access to those explosive Dows at this point. Just because, most importantly, those are H3 boats. But now the Dow is going to be trying its best to continue focusing down the Lodger attack ships. It's got to get itself out of there. At the same time, he's got a little bit of an expansion coming up with the Scholar. These guys are quite decent, but keep in mind uh, the uh, majority of these points are towards the water. So if you want to do, if you do want to contest them, uh, you're going to need water control at least for the most part. Speaking of water control, it looks like Dinky King has been able to retain water control. We'll take a look over from the perspective of his opponent and uh, see they're now sitting in the dark. It seems as he has lost all water control. The Rus player managing to take advantage with his Lodger attack ships. So one of the things that we do see players do when they're playing the Rus, getting four or five attack or fishing boats out, and then when they get up to the next age, they transition them all over into attack ships, and then they secure control of the water. So we'll have to look and see what C the aims to do, but now we're going to be picking up these fishing boats. And one of the things to note with the Rus fishing boats is they don't actually need to restore, um, or they don't need to return, rather, uh, back to their main dock. So these fishing boats out here gathering up their food. The way that it's going to work is they are just going to gather that food and they're just going to reset back down from 40 to 0. Uh, and that is what you can expect to happen very shortly. Speaking of happening, uh, we've now got ourselves uh, some secret little scouts heading up towards the sneaky stealth forest. Going to look to grab themselves some sneaky deer carcasses. Let's see if we can spot out where he hid them. We see a couple. Is that? That's not one. There's one up here. Oh, there's a couple up here. Okay, he didn't actually hide them. He just... It looks like there's another one there. Yeah, there's another one there. So he's hidden away two of them, but I, I don't think he's moved them. I think he just probably killed them over that direction. So not as sneaky as I suspected he was. Now I'm going to be... Oh, sorry for the mic mic tap just there. Got myself a little bit of an itchy neck. So going to be neutralizing that site towards the north. Sacred site going to be going down. And Townsend are going to be dropped up, up here on the edge of his island. 
Now, keep in mind, it's important to have water control because if your enemy does learn the location of this, they're going to be able to begin shelling this from the uh, from the water, and that could be a bit of an issue for you. But obviously, it is the Rus player. They don't have access to battleships, so you're going to be fine. Uh, obviously, the Zebek for the Delhi is a concern for the Rus player, but he's not expanding out onto the water, at least it doesn't seem so just yet. No third age coming through just yet for Dinky King, as you would expect to see. He's actually stacking up tickets quite well at the moment. He's up to five tickets. Uh, so going to be able to use that to purchase stone for a castle if he wants. Uh, he could look to potentially uh, purchase stone for a town center as well. Uh, two stone purchases. Oh, he's actually just purchased something. Sold something. Going up towards that castle. So I think selling a little bit of wood right here. Getting those very favorable trades and probably looking to secure his castle age sooner rather than later. Let's take a look at his base and see what he's going to be going for. Probably going to be going for the Abbey of the Trinity. But, uh, look, I have been surprised before. Yeah, I guess he could actually go for the, um, the, what's it called? The Great, the Great Hall? I'm not sure exactly. I can't remember the, the precise name for it. But, uh, he, he could look to drop that down. There we go. What, is it going to be right here? It is indeed the Abbey of the Trinity going to be getting dropped down now. So, Abbey of the Trinity allowing for a unique technology to be accessed uh, for the warrior monks as well as uh, training them at half the cost. And speaking of warrior monks, a uh, monk up towards the north just managing to capture this sacred site and getting its value worth. So keep in mind, there's still going to be a gold trickle that happens right now for Seether. And the, the time it actually takes to uh, exhaust this sacred site or to neutralize this sacred site, you're going to recover the gold that you lost from this monk. So it's actually always effective. You can see right there, plus 66. The moment that you capture this sacred site, it also gives you plus 66. So it's always going to be effective for you to trade out your scholars for the sacred site. So really nice move there from Seether. I would expect that we're just going to continue to see him training out uh, more scholars from the Dome of the Faith. And that's exactly what we see. He's now sitting on five scholars that are uh, garrisoned at the moment, looking for that sixth one. And we'll continue... Uh, probably looking for sacred sites around the map. He does actually spot this one out, but uh, yet to move out there just yet. Obviously, realizing that the attack ship is going to be out there to deal potentially with him. So the question is, what does he transition into now? The Rus player, very happy on one base. Uh, got a decent water economy. Probably going to be looking at making, you know, a co some combination of spears, lances, or, or oily knights, rather, um, that he'll, he'll upgrade. We saw a trade just happening in there. Uh, and then, so... Obviously, adding Springles as well. Those Springles are going to be quite potent. So, how does he react to that? He's playing the Delhi. So, I would be thinking maybe a Men at Arms combined with Springles would, would work in his situation. He is going to need spring out, Springles to begin pushing out to deal with the attack ships of his enemy. But keep in mind, the enemy could always turn these into demo ships. Uh, so, that's why he's going to need those Springles. So, we'll have to see exactly what he plans on doing. Uh, we've now got double, uh, we've got double Blacksmith coming out for him as well. He's just added that one in. We see that the techs are being researched. Actually, th this might have been here for quite a while, actually. We'll do a quick stock take. 49 villagers on Seether. Over to his opponent now, who is on 60 villagers. So Dinky King doing pretty well. A lot of villagers down here. Probably needs to move up this uh, this lumber camp. Make sure it's on the line. Uh, but now going to be adding in more of these warrior monks. Keep in mind, they are at a reduced cost. And uh, did look to potentially neutralize this site towards the north and... Seether would have got a notification that, hey, some units just passed through here. So now he's looking for him. He's smelling for him. And they are indeed horse archers. These guys hunting for villagers at the moment. They're faster. Got quite a decent range. And keep in mind, they don't actually have any bonuses against any units. So not like the camel archers, which have got a bonus against spears. Um, they do not have that bonus. So he's just going to try and kite them. He's, it's a, a utilization of his APM at this point in time. And I think Caesar, Seether would be quite happy for that. Now going to be looking to potentially enclose his opponent into this wood line and uh, sort of prevent him from going through up towards this mill. There's a single villager up there, but I think he's going to be quite happy with that. Now more spears coming up. He does have that forced march available to him. Uh, we'll take a look how far along it is. Another minute before that comes in. 58 seconds and a mangonel. No, a springled rather coming out uh, and cleaning up all of those horse archers completely. Uh, so neutralizing that sacred site. So now Dinky King looking to go into Horse Archer. So I thought he would be going for a little bit more of a melee composition, but really looking to only go uh, for Horse Archers in his composition. Just got to be careful. There is a a, um, a town center here. A lot of fishing boats out for uh, Dinky King at the moment, though. There's seven down here. Yeah, seven fishing boats here. Six here, three here. 
So, a total of 16 at the moment. Uh, he's probably got even more down this way. Uh, it doesn't seem, so seem like it. It's just uh, some attack ships. And we've got a demo ship that is now going to begin getting dealt with by this outpost. Now, keep in mind, outposts are able to see over this stealth forest. So, they know exactly what's happening uh, behind here. Uh, so, this, this outpost is going to be in a very decent spot. And really demonstrating why that Springwood emplacement is just so important. An extra 61 damage against units and a total of 111 attack against ships. So a huge amount of damage. All of those research techs coming in. Fertilization, owned blades, force march. And that is Delhi for you, baby. Delhi looking very strong. Sitting about 300 points behind at the moment. And uh, really, Delhi's strength is the late game. So if Delhi get through to the late game, they are... I mean, that, that's where they're going to be very potent. But there's also a window for them in the early game as well, right after they've picked up Owned Blades. So do look to see whether we have some sort of timing where there is a combination of lances as well as men at arms combining with Springwolds. I would expect that. We do have a 2TC boom here. Plenty of Springwolds out already. Sitting at 60 villages at the moment for Seether. And his opponent sitting at 68 villages at the moment. Almost a very nice number, but not going to be able to do it. And look at this. Just getting completely melted by those spears. Got to be so careful. And at the same time, he's got Springwolds on the back line, which are just going to do so well. Three town centers now getting add added in for Seether. At the same time, his opponent yet to even add another town center. Actually, no, this this is just this is Siege Workshops. He's really looking for a do or die as more of these units continue to go down. And Seether actually takes the lead with regard to the score. So Seether picking up a very decent trade right there. Going to be very happy with himself. Third town center as well. Now, keep in mind, he's got all the resources he needs up here on this island, at least for now. Okay, now the main concern I've got is gold. His gold is running a little bit dry, but there is gold. He has scouted this gold. He scouted out this gold. He knows where the gold is. Now, you might be thinking, all right, Drongo, well, on this map, it's confluence. You know, there's four corners. You kind of got to expand out to these islands to secure these golds. That's how you get your upgrades. Right, that's how you get your upgrades. But remember, he's playing Delhi. He doesn't pay gold for his upgrades. So the requirement for gold is a lot less significant than other civilizations. So as an example, if Seether it wants to get, you know, his uh, tier 2 uh, pierce armor upgrade, he just pays for it with time. Pays for it with time and with scholars. That's literally it. Whereas if his opponent, Dinky King, wants to get that up upgrade, he is going to have to invest in, let's take a look, gold, 125 gold. Uh, 250 gold for this one. You guys want to know how much it costs for the age 3 one? Oh, sorry, the, the tier 3 one? The tier 3 is 700 gold. 700 gold for each of them. So it's a lot of gold that Delhi is saving in the late game. All right. So Dinky King looking to evacuate most of his ships up here towards the north, but still these Springwoods are going to continue coming out, doing a lot of work. A lot of your attack ships are going to be going down here. Not a lot of HP on them. And going to be neutralizing or capturing that sacred site to the north. And just as we expected, we're starting to see the Springwood Mass begin. So players are definitely moving towards this playstyle. Uh, we don't see any walls yet coming out for Seether on the crossing. But obviously, that's because his enemy control controls the crossing. Fortified Palisade Wall going to be coming out though. And uh, he's going to be pretty happy with the way that the game is going so far. I think Seether is definitely... Uh, this, is it, this is the position where he wants to be, right? He hasn't died in the early game. And as Delhi, that's that's basically your goal. Don't die. If you don't die, then you can possibly win. Now, that's not a guarantee, obviously, Delhi. They're still a civilization that is being uncovered by many people. Uh, and so, as a result, it's, it, it's a little bit difficult to still play them because people are working out compositions. At the moment, I think the best composition is Springled plus Men at Arms plus uh, Knights. Or, sorry, plus uh, Spearmen. Uh, throw in some Lancers at well. A little bit of long distance mining here. Uh, but yeah, throw in some some of... It's, it's basically melee units with Springholds. Uh, seem to be best. And it seems to be a timing in H3 that is the best. And so now we see those men-at-arms coming out. They've got that extra attack. Manganel looking here. Needs to be careful. These uh, these Lodja attack ships are looking to uh, potentially put a bit of damage out here. Not going to be able to get too much on it. We've got the plus two upgrades. And really, Cedar doing a great job here with his upgrades. He's actually managed to secure... Uh, the majority of his upgrades at this stage in the game. So if we take a look from his perspective, okay, you can see he's getting in all of his economic upgrades, all of his military upgrades, and at the same time, uh, he's just having a really, you know, doing a great job. And then with regard to his uh, other upgrades, there's a couple in here that he can potentially get, greased axles. It's going to take some time, though, and he, he wants to create Springholds at the moment, not really anything else. And now up towards the north, Springholds are going to be uh, getting repelled. Because a keep is going down. And once that keep goes down, there's no way the Springholds get through. 
Uh, that's probably the best spot he can make for it. I don't think he can get up here. In fact, he probably could get up here. Yeah, I, we can't actually see any way to do it. Uh, so I expect he's probably going to have a Scholar coming out towards this sacred site. Indeed he does. Scholar coming out to capture this sacred site. And any relics over here towards the north? It doesn't look like it. Over towards the west? It actually looks like the majority of the relics have been taken. No, there's only two relics that have been taken. Where are all these relics? No relics here. No relics here. Am I blind? Why don't I see the relics? Has he got... He must have a monastery or something. Oh, that, no, that is the monastery. Oh, yeah, okay. Abbey of the Trinity up here with the three in it. Monastery with two. Uh, he's literally taken all five of the relics. Uh, gonna be pa catching the... Uh, uh, or picking up uh, the, the relic here out of this and uh, now bringing in some food as well. So, pushes happening on most parts of the islands. Backlight coming in to enforce on the front line. And uh, now we've got ourselves a little push down here towards the south. So, look, we may have a potential base trade. Oil coming in, boiling oil coming in. Finally, someone is getting boiling oil. See, they're going to be taking it here. And uh, the question is whether he's going to have enough time to research it. It's going to take four minutes because this is not connected to his network. He needs to drop down a mosque. Uh, probably... Oh, I don't even know if this is connected. He would need to drop down multiple mosques to get this connected. It's going to take a long time before this boiling oil is in and he's not going to have enough time before these get through. He's going to continue looking to secure up this side on the south as well of the island. So looking to secure this gold. A lot of forests in here as well. Now, one of the things to note, we don't actually see a lot of hunting cabins. There's one hunting cabin down here, but there's no real other hunting cabins that have been going on. And keep in mind, at the moment, Dinky King is still sitting on one town center. So he is on 74 villages. We'll compare that to the three of his opponent, who's on 86. So somehow managing to keep up with the economy relatively well. Obviously got those five relics. Uh, so keep in mind, each of those relics is going to be working out to be about... Uh, I think it works out to be about two villages of gold per relic. So he's got five of those, so ten... Uh, and then at the same time, he's also got this uh, sacred site as well. So that's going to give him, I think, uh, 12. He's got this relic out, so we'll minus two off for that. But uh, he's very happy with himself. Delhi, by the same token, each of theirs works out to be about four villagers. Uh, so he has got the equivalent of eight. Uh, or he's got one sacred site up here, one si sacred site down here. So he's uncovered uh, two sacred sites so far. Uh, uncovered? I don't know if that's the right word. He's secured. Uh, two sacred sites so far. So the equivalent of about eight villages. So ba both players quite even. And see they're now actually sitting at max population. Uh, compare that over to Dinky King, who's about 25 population away from hitting his max. So see they're looking pretty down decent at the moment. As where did this where did this wall come up from Dinky King? This is absolutely hilarious. How did he get this through? This is hilarious. We need to do this, the cheeky dog. This is, this is very funny. If he pushes down here towards the, the south at the same time as the enemy's enforcements or reinforcements, and, and yeah, this, this is a problem with these bridges. Uh, very difficult to wall off, so your enemy can still just run past these. Um, okay, it looks like boiling oil is still coming in. Almost finished. Two minutes to go on boiling oil. A lot of sprinkles out right now uh, for both players, and a keep going to be going down. Now, keep in mind, if, if Rus does get to the late game, Rus is going to have the advantage when it comes to these sprinkled wars uh, just simply because it has access to roller shutter triggers and also has access to a unique tech which is going to be increasing the range of those even further so taking it up to 13.5 through the high armory he does look like he wants to age up at the moment sitting very close to max population and going to have a counterweight trebuchet out don't you love that sound don't you love that sound as the bombs begin to fall or that rather the rocks begin to fall doc now going to be having a bit of trouble as the Springholds slowly begin to work away at it. 10 damage on each of these bad boys. Only 10 range on the Springholds as well. But more than enough to uh, stay out of range of the keep for now. Keep sitting at 8 range of... of or ten, 8 tiles of range. And now see they're going up to the next age. Going to be going up with... I think that is the Elephant Landmark. No, it is the Hussar Academy. So going up with the Hussar Academy. Uh, and going to be looking to secure a food source for the remainder of the game. So we'll have to take a look at that food coming in. You just saw it right then, plus 34. So the way that this works is the more research you've done, the more food you get. So that's the way that it works. So if you've researched every single technology, you get crazy amounts of food. Uh, but keep in mind, food is already infinite in this game through farms. So the question is, is it worth it? Now we've got ourselves a little bit of a drop, I think, potentially happening down here towards the south as they begin to get in on top of the Springholds. And now Cedar trying his best to react as the Mangonel looks like it might be going down as well amongst all the Springholds. But 
all of the knights now looking to escape a handful of them managing to get out as we see nine lancers rather nine knights managing to get out so i don't imagine that he went through this way i think he had to have dropped transport ship indeed he dropped so definitely being taken by surprise see the wars at that point and delhi looking like they're in a strong position but at the same time it's important to remember that uh the game is still young my friends and delhi are a civilization that can get run around quite easily uh, the elephants oh now we've got ourselves all oh, the boiling oil the boiling oil the boiling oil here it comes three two one boiling oil pour oh it lands on all the villagers oh my god it's gonna absolutely shred through it with the castle oh a few of them managed to make it through but oh my lord you've just learned why boiling oil is so strong now he's gonna run them back the other way he's like no 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 guys don't go that way go the other way boiling oil gonna come out again and gonna evaporate them all as they all fall down oh villagers it was a massacre it was a massacre you got boiled to death you got boiled to death oh it was terrible terrible damage bombard gonna be coming out now for seether this is exactly what he needs now all of these sprinkles gonna be coming out as well uh no plus two upgrades no roller triggers just yet we do see that he's got blacksmiths out we'll have a look and see what he's got in the queue at the moment there's the roller shutter triggers there's the siege works coming in and all those sprinkles coming in as well he's got five siege workshops at the moment so he knows what the definition of fuck around and find out is because he is fucking around that is for sure well actually i'd say right now dinky king is fucking around and he's about to find out but ladies and gentlemen if you're watching at home that's why you get that all important upgrade right please don't forget boiling oil it is amazing really really important upgrade now gonna be getting slow burning defenses increases the firearm of stonewall's towers keeps an outpost by plus 10 this is a, an upgrade i love this is such a cool upgrade for the delhi, delhi sultanate it is unique to them uh, they've also got access to village fortresses which keep act like town centers including unit production population capacity and technology so essentially you have these absolutely crazy uh, keeps in the late game so really cool technology is coming out here for the delhi uh, in the late game so he's going to have keeps everywhere and essentially just have like a whole bunch of town center equivalents elite spearmen now coming out for the delhi and don't these absolutely look awesome i love the way that they they've got that little gold and bronze there on the helmet and now they begin pushing out do we have those elite men at arms indeed we do now springles looking to have a little bit of a, a trade out here but keep in mind 13.5 range on the enemy springles so they've got a significant range advantage over their opponent look at these springles getting defended this is why rus springles are the best in the business baby 13.5 range they outrange every single siege unit you can make as the delhi completely outrange them and there's really no counter to this other than mass scouts running in but take a look at all the units that he's got back here looking to potentially uh cover for him screen for him on this front line and at the same time this uh this counterweight trebuchet is going to continue bombarding down here for dinky king and see there's going to have to wonder how do i actually deal with this now there's a little secret to dealing with this many treb or this many spring orders from the rus it's hard to deal with but i'll explain it as best i can get a bombard bring the bombard in now bombard only does 170 damage so you're probably gonna need two okay you gotta bring it in from an angle and then you don't want your enemy to get a concave on you you have to bring it in and then take the shot on the enemy springwoods and then heal up your bombard with villagers you need to pull like i'm talking 20 villagers that's how you do it you see the bombard coming out now it's looking to find a shot these springwoods are all just going to turn on it evaporate it instantly well bombard what are you doing bombard what are you doing bombard not like this bombard no that's not where you were meant to go bombard why are you over there you were meant to be on this side of the river that's the wrong side of the river bombard you're gonna get yourself dealt with it what 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 is happening why are players ignoring the bombard bombard now get going the way of the dodo as well unfortunate for him uh that's what happens when you right click things they take the uh the route that they determine is the best uh best route to take in that situation and unfortunately for D dinky king i mean I, I mean it was quite fortunate for dinky king really uh but for Seether, on the other hand not the best all right wall still securing up down here towards the south but keep in mind he can potentially go through here villager gonna be out here is, it, is he doing a little bit of long distance mining you sneaky villager you're doing long distance mining we got ourselves some trade coming down 110 uh trade at the moment and we hear that bombard now it sounds like it's firing off was that the bombard oh bombard here from c from dinky king gonna be finding uh firing at uh, at seether and i'm getting a little bit worried at the moment for seether it's definitely looking like the rus have got the advantage in the late game when it comes to this composition and the question is how do you deal with this effectively especially through choke points like this now you can make 100 scouts we've seen players on delhi do that before but are you gonna be able to fit them through this choke point are you gonna be able to deal with that probably probably not boiling all has been researched for the keep though so i mean he can always just fall back towards that keep 
And now we've got ourselves a little bit of a drop, ladies and gentlemen. It is Drop City tonight, isn't it? We have got players just dropping from all regions of the world. And is he going for a bit of a snipe? I mean, where is this high armory? We need to find the high arm armory because that's going to be the fourth and final landmark. I'm not seeing it. I think it might be in the base here. Yeah, it's down here in the base. It is down here in the base. Uh, we could have ourselves a little bit of a base race as he looks to get up a third transport, fourth transport ship, I take that back, and looks to secure victory here. Now, keep in mind, he's going to continue throwing up keeps, but obviously the bombard is just going to do so much work against the keep. Uh, it really just doesn't doesn't mess around. Adjustable crossbars now coming in, getting that mangonel a nice little reduced time as well. The drop's going to be coming in. Villagers unaware of this. No, Dinky King actually spots over it over the top as the forces now begin to m emerge out of the forests. He's trying his best to get these units out and about, popping a few out, and Dinky King... Is he reacting to it just yet? We don't see any army being pulled back at this stage. No emergency keep getting thrown down. And now the forces of his opponent see that begin to descend upon his base. The first landmark is in their sights. Will they commit to the landmarks? Is he just going to look for villager kills? I, if I was him, I would probably be going for landmarks. And now the forces of his opponent begin to make their way back towards it. We see plenty of scouts in here. A couple of elite knights as well. Keep in mind, all of these units are upgraded. And it looks like he's actually just ignoring that and heading down towards the south. We'll take a look from his perspective. He does spot the keep that's going to go up. Looking to actually secure some villager kills right now as all of the units begin to sub to uh, sub submerge. Converge? We'll go with converge. All of the units now converging on the villagers as they attempt to get that keep. He's tried his best to buy his way back into it, but now having a little bit of a struggle. And I would say at this point, almost doing a little bit of a panic. Uh, there's another castle down here, or keep rather, towards this entrance, guarding it. And we do see those military units beginning to make their way back towards the town center. He's just indiscriminately firing at wooden fortresses at the moment, and it really makes me scratch my head and wonder why that's for. Town center's going to be going down as well, and... I, I gotta wonder what Seether's up to in his, in on his side. Why? Why is what's his focus on on those specific things? Maybe is he just causing havoc at this point? That could be it. Maybe just causing havoc for his enemy or looking to get out in amongst the battle. But now we spot the veteran archers. No glowing archers just yet for these guys. So no imperial upgrades. But we do see that the elite men at arms. How much damage they do. They've got seven armor. Compare that to the nine attack of their enemy. They're going to be doing only two damage to them. But on the back line, these Springwoods are going to be able to deal out so much damage against his attackers and going to be able to shut that down. So that attack has been sorted. But Seether really looking quite strong at the moment. I mean, we look at his economy. It's looking very decent. He's going to be quite happy with himself. But uh, only on 87 villages. He is getting raided up towards the north. These walls have been shut down. So will we potentially see a wall coming across? Probably not at this stage. Looks like he might be getting into the economy, though. If Dinky King finds this, this could potentially... I mean, I, I say it could potentially be GG, but he's sitting on 6k food at the moment, so it's not a super big deal, especially because his castles can train villagers as well. So even that as well, like, I mean, he's going to be able to train villagers here. He's got castles all over the shop. He's going to be a happy camper. He's fine. Springwood's now doing their best to deal with these elite knights and having no trouble at all. And you can see why the Springwoods are so damn strong in this game. So they're just able to clean up enemy units from so damn far away. Springwood's now going to begin to converge or yeah, converge towards this western island. At least that's the way they look that they're heading. And the rest of these units are going to be getting cleaned up. Do we have... We've got Streltsy coming out. It looks like we've got Streltsy coming out. Streltsy are very effective against the armored units. Obviously doing 48 damage. Uh, a shot. It is a lot of damage. Enough to bypass that eight armor. Demo ships. Oh my god, demo ships! It's happening, ladies and gentlemen. Get yourself ready. We're about to witness it. It goes off the first one. It, oh, it kills everything! Oh my god, the demo ships. Oh, they're so good on these maps. Oh, they are so good on these maps. Oh my god, Dinky King. Oh, Lord, dude. That was... Oh, I can't believe you just lost everything like that. Dinky King struggling right now. You can see the economy. This could... The, was that the demo ship to save the game for Seether? I think that may have been the demo ship to save the game. Uh, Dinky King right now, he's, he is in a absolute mess. He's lost the majority of his units. He's, uh, the remainder of his Springwoods are down on 30 HP right now. He is trying his best to get back up into this, and you can see that his opponent has actually researched that explosive technology. He does spot the trade happening as well. 110 gold coming back on each of those bad boys. But uh, now the Bombard doing its best to fire off at the fortified outpost. Going to be healed up here by some villagers. So very nice play here 
from Seether if he can actually manage to keep this outpost alive. And we have seen demos all day here. And now we've got ourselves another drop happening. Dinky King does have that boiling oil, so we can expect to see it not doing too much damage. I think it only does 30 damage at the moment. And obviously the seven armor in here, I think it's probably... I don't know. Do you think your armor stops boiling oil? Like, I, I feel like if there's boiling oil and you've, you're wearing armor, it's probably not going to do much. I mean, it probably doesn't. Maybe it soaks through. What if it's chainmail? Maybe leather? Probably it does something. Chainmail? Probably not. You know what? It's boiling oil. It, it It's going to fuck you up no matter what. Now going to begin working down these landmarks. We talked about it earlier as to whether he would begin focusing down these landmarks, and it seems like the right decision. He really needs to focus the landmarks, focus these all-important um, these uh, relics. Not look to take the relics, but really look to secure the victory. We've seen a number of different strategies throughout the day, but the dominant one definitely seems to be racing for the enemy's landmarks and trying your best to sneak something through. And now we see Seether doing his best to try and defend against the onslaught that comes through from Dinky King towards the north. All of these Springles are moving into range and they've got to be careful. A lot of them are low HP. We'll take a look and see that whether he's able to micro these units effectively. He's doing a great job of getting up in, in the face and saying day. He's got a Springled up there just coming up to give him a little bit of a love tap. And all of the Springles are going to be going the way of the Dodo. And it looks like Dinky King going to be in a difficult spot as the men at arms begin to surround his his uh, Streltsy. And despite having a significant number advantage, it looks like he's going to begin suffering because... Dinky King is now in a little bit of a little bit of trouble, I would say. Do we have any more drops coming in? I think that we might have some more drops coming in. No, we've got what have we got? We got backless coming out. We got backless coming out. No more drops coming in at the moment. Look at the beautiful base right now from uh, Cedar. He's looking very good. Backless gonna be having a tough time dealing with this, that's for sure. But uh, now Streltsy going to be on the front lines, able to clean this up completely. But you've got to ask the question, is there going to be any way that he is able to deal with Seether? Uh, Seether has got a significant economy at the moment, a significant advantage. Going to continue pushing that advantage on the water down to 137 population at the moment and trying his best to hold on. Now going to actually lose out all of these backlers. And the question is, what is going to be the nail in the, the coffin as an attack now begins towards the north? Six, eight Springles rather. No, six Springles beginning to move in. All of these Springles going to be going down here for Dinky King. He's in a bit of a difficult spot. And good game gets called. Dinky King is out. Seetha is the victor. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this amazing game. I had a lot of fun casting it. And it's great to see Delhi getting picked up more and more throughout the post-Genesis period. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.